Eric will go look at the data slides right now. Uh, our first one is kind of our regular slide, our key indicators. Um, cases have gone down. Um, you know, they've been hovering around 1,200. Uh, the day before yesterday was higher. Yesterday is 1,178. Uh, cases that's a little bit below the 21 day average but really kind of hovering right there uh, 21 deaths uh, 122 hospitalizations that is up a little bit and ICU emissions is up a little bit as well uh, Eric will go to the next one uh, we continue to rank our counties this is updated from uh, Tuesday uh, by highest occurrence uh, and remember the way we do this uh, we're trying to compare apples to apples and uh, trying to adjust, we do adjust for population by county. So what we're trying to see is uh, what is the intensity uh, during the last two weeks of the COVID spread and COVID cases uh, in the county. And so Eric, why don't you, let's go over to our top 10. Uh, we'll easily read, I th again, again, I think what, uh, Mercer County is still uh, number one. Uh, Champaign County is, is number two. And Lawrence County, three. And Dart County, number four. So the first four counties are what we would normally consider rural counties. Uh, if you go through the rest of the list, you, you do see Lucas, a bigger county, and Franklin. Uh, but you also see Perry County, Meigs County, and Seneca County, as well as Fairfield, smaller, smaller counties. So this is just one more way to look at it. Uh, again, it is not a long historical look back. It is a look back for the last the last two weeks. And of course, every day this, these numbers change a little bit as we go back for the for the 14 days. But again, it gives gives you one other way besides the color uh, to look at what's going on uh, in in the area in where you live. Eric, let's take a look at the next one. Our Ohio National Guard continues uh, to go around the state and do what we call pop-up testing, uh, testing for one day going into the community. Uh, you'll see uh, this week, um, uh, had the opportunity to be uh, in Cincinnati, uh, in Gallia County, uh, Athens County, uh, Cincinnati and Dayton. Uh, next week, uh, a much more uh, busier schedule uh, Bucyrus, Cincinnati, Dayton, Avon Lake, Cincinnati, Youngstown, Avon Lake again, Lima, Cincinnati, Warren, and Middletown. And so, again, if you have in your community, if you believe that there's additional testing that needs to be done, uh, the National Guard can come in and do that testing. Uh, Eric, let's go to our uh, color map again. Uh, this is a new map uh, for, for today. Uh, and let me kind of kind of go through through this. Uh, this week we have uh, 12 red counties. Uh, three new counties have turned red since last week. The new counties, uh, two of them are in southwest Ohio. Claremont County, again, they had at one time been red. They're now red again. Uh, Brown County, again, southwest Ohio. And then over uh, in the eastern part, Muskingum County. Uh, remaining as red counties this week are Cuyahoga, Erie, Fairfield, Franklin, Licking, Lucas, Marion, Mercer, and Montgomery County. Uh, seven of our red counties met fewer than four indicators, but are still designated as red. Uh, this is because uh, they are above 100,000, 100, uh, more, more than 100 cases of coronavirus per 100,000 in the past two weeks. That's the, that is the measure. 100 additional cases, coronavirus per 100,000 in the past two weeks. Um, have some good news. Allen and Medina counties are no longer red. And so we congratulate them and just uh, ask everyone to continue to wear the mask and do what they need to do uh, to keep that down. Allen County uh, dropped two indicators. They fell off the list for high incidence counties based on the CDC's uh, definition. Medina County also moved from the red alert to orange. They're no longer meeting the emergency, de emergency department indicator, which is an early indicator. Uh, nine counties have dropped from orange to yellow. They are Adams, Defiance, Fulton, Henry Knox, Lake, Paulding, Pike, and Williams. <clears throat> 
Let's talk a little bit about uh, the, the red counties. We'll start uh, in southern Ohio, southeast Ohio uh, with Brown County. Uh, it's red for the first time. 21% uh, of their cases uh, throughout this pandemic have occurred in the last two weeks, one-fifth. While they've had a couple of outbreaks, the number of cases linked to those outbreaks has been low, which indicates uh, significant community spread throughout the county. Uh, Claremont County, uh, we saw cases uh, increase throughout June with about 120 cases a week in early July. Uh, this was followed by good news. The community was just starting to see those cases come down as we moved uh, through July, uh, down to under 80 new cases in the third week of July. However, the last two weeks, we're seeing cases creep back up. Uh, the last seven days of July had 101 cases. In addition to cases going back up, we've also seen increases in healthcare use for patients with COVID-19. Uh, Cuyahoga County, uh, they continue their steady decrease in daily number of cases reported. Uh, they're at 102. So if they get below 100, uh, they will move out of the red area. So very good news there. Um, county has reported some outbreaks in long-term care facilities and group homes. Erie County. Erie is red because they meet the CDC's threshold for high incidence. Again, high incidence is above 100. Uh, they're at 105 cases per 100,000 residents in the past two weeks. Um, they have gone down, and that is good news. Fairfield County. Uh, they are above 100. They're at 114. While the county had slightly fewer new cases during the past week, their numbers remain elevated. Franklin County also continues as read this week because they meet the CDC definition for high incidence. Uh, their cases are, in fact, dropping, but they're still at 126. Uh, they dropped from 142 to 126 uh, per capita. Uh, Licking County. Uh, still meets the CDC's definition for high incidence, which kept them red this week. Uh, they only met two other indicators, uh, cases per capita and percentage of cases in non-congregate settings. Uh, Lucas County, 159 cases per 100,000 residents. Uh, of course, they meet the definition of being over 100. Uh, Marion County uh, meets the CDC's definition for high incidence. They are at 101, so they're right on the line there. Um, but they're close to dropping off that. So we hope by uh, next week, Marion County cases will have eased down and Marion County will no longer be red. Uh, Mercer County, again, as we said, at 298 cases, way above uh, anybody else. Uh, <clears throat> uh, and that's, 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 that's the, the news there, unfortunately. So um, significant community spread uh, is, is taking place. Montgomery County, uh, cases per 100,000 down to 94. Uh, that's been uh, an improvement, uh, but they still remain red this week. While they no longer meet the CDC's threshold for high incidence, they meet four other indicators. They're one of two counties that had increases in both their emergency department and outpatient visits during this reporting period. Not good news, because what that means is those are the early, early warning signs. Uh, the cases are going to start, start to creep up. So that's not good. Uh, Muskingum County, as we said, first week is red. Um, they are at 62 cases per 100,000, but uh, they have other uh, indicators that put them this, in this category. Again, for them, outpatient visits grew from an average of four uh, visits on August 3rd to nine on August 10th. So that percentage of cases uh, increase is certain, certainly not good. Uh, we've tried to share some stories uh, about how the virus spreads. Uh, let me just share a few. Uh, in Clark County, a group of friends got together to play cards at a friend's home. Now, sadly, uh, seven individuals are, in fact, uh, testing positive. <clears throat> uh, we're also continuing to see small workplace outbreaks. Uh, where one member of the staff spreads it uh, to a group of co-workers. In some of these cases, the businesses have had to close for cleaning uh, or for staffing. We've seen this in New Philadelphia, and we've seen it in Dayton, and we've seen it uh, in other parts of Montgomery County as, as well. Um, we're going to continue to share the, these stories, again, not to uh, 
uh, be critical of anyone, but rather just to, uh, explain that these cases are spreading and just kind of common everyday occurrences. When people let their guard down, don't wear a mask, uh, don't do the social distancing, and they can occur among friends, they can occur among family members. Eric, let's go back to a, another map, uh, and I've asked our uh, data team to um, kind of combine something from the Ohio Department of Education uh, and the Ohio Department of Health. And so if you will look at uh, the map that is up now, and particularly the one that's on your left, uh, this is a, a kind of an overlay map, and what we have done uh, where you see uh, counties in red uh, with, the re with the red outline, uh, those are counties that uh, this week are red. Uh, some have been red for a while, some just became red, but these are our red counties this week. Overlaid inside of that or laid inside of that um, is the Department of Education's map um, in regard to which schools are coming back in person. So uh, let's start with uh, the darkest color on there. See how good my eyesight is, but uh, I would call it dark blue, maybe. Uh, dark blue um, is fully remote. So these are the school districts that we know of right now uh, that have decided to be fully remote. Um, the the uh, the blue um, what I would call the light blue is hybrid, which means they're coming back uh, partially uh, in in school and and partially remote. And um, the the ones that are coming back full time, uh, their plans to come back full time, uh, that's sort of a green, uh, if I can read that correctly. And, and the only point is for everybody f from those areas to, to look. Um, I, I had some conversations with some superintendents last week. I'm going to have some more conversations this week. Um, and every school is making its own decision uh, about whether to come back and which way to come back. Um, you know, we've had a long tradition in this state of local, local schools making their own decisions, families making their own decisions school boards making their own decisions. Uh, but if you look at the, back at the map for a moment, uh, Eric, um, those that are red and are coming back in person, uh, you know, that is a challenge. And it's really, it's a challenge to, not to, so much to the educators because I, after talking to a lot of superintendents and principals and teachers, I think they're going to do a bang up job uh, to do everything they can to keep your children safe, your grandchildren safe when they go back in school. Um, but I'm pointing this map out kind of for us, uh, for people in the community. Uh, we have a job to do. Uh, and our job to do is to slow down the spread in the community so the school can either open or the school can stay open. And I just put these counties up because these are the reddest county. These are the red counties. These are the ones we're seeing right now with, with the most spread. But it's important. It's an important principle, I think, for all of us, whether we're yellow county, whether red county, whether in orange county. Uh, and that is we have an obligation to do everything we can to, to slow down the spread in our community so our kids can go to school, our grandkids can go to school, they can play sports, uh, and they can do all the other things that uh, you know, we, we want them to do and the things that we want them to get uh, out, out of school.